Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, my name is Rashmi Shah. Uh, I'm the CEO of Simplicity Investing. Uh, currently, I'm in Dallas, uh, and I'm doing this presentation uh, webinar from Dallas. And uh, this event or webinar is for our clients, Simplicity Investing uh, clients and prospective clients in India. Uh, this is not for investors in US and Canada, uh, residents of that. Uh, so this is one of my caveats. And I'm going to talk today about the volatility in the financial markets, and how you manage it, and what what is the key point to navigate through this. So what is the most important thing you have to do? Uh, I would request everyone uh, to see, logged in keep logging because in the end part i'm going to show you a real life examples of how this volatility is actually managed by one of the live accounts and what happened so uh, the risk so that will be very interesting case study which i want you to see that um, so i'll begin today so i have been in this business uh, for the last 40 years and i've been investing and i've seen uh, advising clients and I've seen a lot of volatility in the market so if you ask me uh, the investor returns the stock market and the financial markets are going to behave the way they are going to behave uh, but everyone doesn't get the same return why everyone doesn't get, doesn't get the same return so what are the key components of that there are three parts of it one is uh, security what investments you select and second is asset allocation, how you allocate the money between those assets, the uh, investments you have selected, and how you behave of you uh, when markets are volatile. So this is the three things which determine the portfolio, what you make money. So like everyone is a doctor, but all doctors don't make same money. Same thing in life, it's every same, correct? We all live on the same earth, but some are extremely happy, some are extremely unhappy. So there is no role of the earth it's the role of what we actually do correct so same thing happens in investments so in investments so how much does each component of wealth building process contributes you to your wealth so whatever money you make in your life who contributes the most to your wealth so investor behavior how you behave is 50 percent not the market market doesn't give you return the return is given by how you behave during different phases of the market. And that is the key. And how you allocate assets, that's 25%. And the security selection is another 25 So if you look at this, today I'm going to focus on this 75% part of it. Uh, how your behavior should be there and what kind of a asset allocation you should have. So how you can manage through this, this thing. And, and we are living through on very exceptionally unusual times. The whole world is seeing that and we are still next two years are going to be very critical so how you manage your behavior and what you should do in during different phases of volatility i'm going to talk about that today uh, now let me give you an example last four months market after this coronavirus came in february correct it picked up it started uh, the world started giving importance to coronavirus after february 2020 after 15 February especially and so let me summarize what happened in the stock markets correct so if you see you know, on January 1st this was the market Nifty was at 12,000 NASDAQ was 8,800 S&P 5 Dow Jones and I've given the numbers set the first row the second row in January or February 14 February the markets were at the all-time high so Nifty was at 12,352 and uh, then the coronavirus news started spreading by march 20th that nifty of 12352 came down to 7600 the fastest fall i have seen in my lifetime hmm? same thing happened in nasdaq from 9700 came to 7000 and so on correct so from 52 week high to 52 week low nifty went down by 38 percent NASDAQ went down by 28%, S&P by minus 34, Dow Jones by minus 37, and Nikkei by minus 31. Now, uh, I did my first webinar around um, last week of March, and I said the first market to recover in the world will be the US. Uh, and 
around 20th March onwards, the U.S. market started recovering. So that from 52-week low, uh, today we are at, uh, where we have reached, the market, Indian market has recovered 33% from the bottom. Uh, NASDAQ has recorded 40%, S&P 500 43%, Dow Jones 43% and 38%. Now, so if you see markets are extremely volatile, it went 40% down and it went 40% up. Now, if you ask yourself questions that what you did during that time, when markets went down at 40%, what you did when markets went up 40%. Uh, very important questions, correct? So same thing, we have to ask ourselves what thought process we went through, what you do. Now, if I convert this into actual rupee terms, so January, uh, from January, the dollar has appreciated by 6%, Japanese yen also has appreciated by 6%. So if you see the actual returns um, from January 1st, uh, the India, so in the second slide, so I'll share that with you. The Market volatility has exposed. Now, this volatility has exposed everyone in the world. There is not a single person on this earth who didn't get affected by Corona. Right from President Trump to Pres Prime Minister Narendra Modi, name the country heads, name the billionaires, millionaires, ordinary people, everyone got impacted. Now, if anyone says he didn't get impacted by this lockdown or this investment, oh, well, he's telling you a lie. There are only two people uh, in February, who sold the entire portfolio and went. And who were they two? They were two Senate members of the U.S. government. He, he, the Senate member was the uh, in charge of the health ministry in under President Trump. When he saw this COVID-19 China report, and he went to President Trump and he told him that this kind of stuff is happened. President Trump said, don't worry about it, nothing is going to happen. And he came back. On February 15, he and his wife sold his entire portfolio. Now an inquiry is going on now based on the insider information. Why? Other than those, that two th few guys who had insider information based on what actions and what's going to happen, no one in the world could exit the market. The market, and that, that's how the market, uh, this happened. Now, now if you see today, uh, if you see today, as of today, this data is as of today, what has happened? From uh, January 1st, year-to-date return, Nifty has given minus 17% return. So Nifty was 12,182 and on 6 June it was 10,142. So from January 1st, it is still minus 17. NASDAQ actually has gone up. NASDAQ was 8,872 and now it's 9,800. So it has given a positive return of 11% plus rupee appreciation, depreciation by 6, so 17 percent. So if you compare NASDAQ with our in NSE, we have underperformed by 33 percent. Compared to S&P 500, India has underperformed by 21 percent. Dow Jones, we have performed 21 percent negative, and Nikkei, we have performed 22. So you, you will say, okay, I should have invested everything in US. Okay, now hold on your breath. Uh, that's also not true, partially. Now, if you see how the coronavirus spread is happening, uh, the U.S. economy, the U.S. peaked up in coronavirus in the month of April, and the economy started opening after 15th of April. So the market recovered the first year. India, the peak has not yet happened. The India, the economy is starting opening this week. So you will see the market rallying for next two or three weeks. So this underperformance will get caught up in next two or three weeks. That's what I want to tell you. That eventually the global recovery started with US and now it will spread to India and other emerging markets as the coronavirus. Now, um, so you hold your breath and Indian recovery has started and it will gain momentum in next two or three weeks and next week and it will rotate, rotate. So that's the data is telling me. And same thing we had predicted in the month of March that the first recovery will start from US and we requested many of our clients to put more money in the US at that time and now we are shifting that, correct? So we are saying now you put more money in India and build the portfolio that way. So that is the allocation you do that. Now coming back during this phase of February and March Everyone must have asked these questions. Everyone, you close your eyes and ask yourself questions. What did, what did you think? Everyone must have thought, are my investments at the right place? Why did I exit in the month of February? Hmm? Why the markets are going up now 
and should I exit the market? This question is, and am I getting the right advice? See, what's happening now, because most of the people at home and everybody's got affected, everyone is chatting, correct? And everybody's uh, on WhatsApp and the, so much news is getting spread. There's so much information overload that people are getting confused. So it's like on a station where the train can take only 1,000 passengers, there are 20,000 passengers there, and what kind of chows or crowd you see, it's unmanageable. Same thing that's happening with your yeah, every individual. There's so much information and so much gossip, right, wrong, panic, greed, and many people say, oh, I did this, I did the smart thing, he did wrong, and that thing, and it's confusing everyone. So we need to take a deep breath and say what exactly I want to do and what I am doing. Your behavior is going to matter the most in the coming days. And that's why I'm going to talk about that. Because if you get, the more confused you get, the more portfolio you're going to destroy. And the more emotional you are, the more bad it's for your wealth. So let's recap the current situation. Now, the current situation is 80 to 90% of the world which was under lockdown is slowly opening up. Uh, everywhere, the, the schools, international flights, offices are all operating at 10 or 15 percent capacity okay schools have not yet opened at most of the places but they're slowly opening up uh, international flight less than 10 percent are working and office uh, social distancing has become mandatory everywhere it's going to be a part of our life for next three four five years and disruption is at the fastest speed all our business plans everyone's plans of marriage celebrations vacations business expansions, investments, real estate, everything has gone for a toss. It's not only your investment has gone for a toss, everything has gone for a toss. So now we all have to rework our life, correct, and rebalance it and do that. Same thing we do, you have to do about your investments. So how do you rationally and logically do that will matter the most? And as economies open up, the markets are going to recover, correct? So let, let me show you some other uh, the data. This S&P 500 has recovered, th this was as of Thursday, uh, by Friday it has recovered 40% because it went up another 2% on Friday. Now, th so if you see this October 19 till February it went up and then it crashed, correct? And then it, and this yellow line is 200 days moving average. So when the market goes below 200 moving average, it goes in the bear market, it happened that way. And it was there for last two months, two and a half, three months, and now it has broken that and it has gone up here, correct? It has gone up. No, at, at this point was the maximum point of maximum panic, correct? Maximum panic. This was on March 20th. So ask yourself, what did you think here? What did you think here? And what are you thinking now? If your thinking and your actions will determine your returns and how you emotionally think that is the most important thing so how you should think I'm going to share more data the, this is not the first time this has happened in my life I've seen this in 1987 I've seen this in 92 93 Harshan Mehta scam I've seen this in 2001 when uh, technology markets crash I've seen this in 2008 and now this is 2010 for me this is not a new thing I've seen markets crashing 50%, 40% in a span of six months. So those investors who have not seen this, for them, it's very different, correct? They think the world is, economy is going to, whole world is going to get over. No, nothing is going to happen. The world is going to start. Like every day, more than, in normal case also, more than five lakh people die every day in the world and five lakh babies are born. Hmm. So there is some sadness, some happiness. The same thing is going to continue. Uh, the world is not going to end. The business is not going to end. The economy is not going to end. Now what you do, that is going to matter. So, uh, and that's how wealth is going to get created in your personal life. Hmm. Now, so what you should do, how you should think. So here's the, another data which I'm sharing. So these are the cases where in 50 days period, 50, 50 days period, stock market went up more than 20%. So in, since 1975, these are the dates where stock market went up in a 50-day period more than 20%. 26% in 77, 5, 75, 82, 91, 97, 98. Then in 2009, you see that two times. Once it went by 34% and once it went by 21%. So after that, so many times people, now this is the highest it has gone, this time it has gone up by 40%. 
So this is as of Thursday. So if you add Friday's return on this in US, it becomes 40%. So when markets went up 40% in a span of three months, many of you will think, okay, it's time to exit the market. So, okay, let's think about it. So what happened in the past when it happened this way? Within one month, only two times market corrected by this much. Every time after one month, market was even higher than that. After three months, market was higher every time except in 1991. After six months, it was higher in every case. And in, nine, in nine, 2009, it was up by 22 and 12%. And after 12 months, you see, it was higher even more, every single case. And so this time also, it's going to be the same thing. Um, but more, many people, retail investors, they're going to say, okay, oh, let's come back. It's time to get out and make my money safe. So this is one of the things which I'm expecting to happen. Uh, because people are people, they are people very emotional. The other thing I have experienced many times when you counsel clients, they are so fearful they tell you lies, they, they give emotions. Uh, oh, I have, I have this, I have that. I said, okay, that's fine enough. Um, they, they create imaginary illusions and cases why they should exit the market. And that is the fear. Fear drives your decision making, which should not be the case. The facts and logic should determine, correct? So uh, the behavior is the most important part. So you ask yourself how you behave, how you think. Okay? How do you see big picture in your life? Are you Mr. and Mrs. Visionary? Hmm? Now, are you a disciplined person who follow the process? Hmm? Then are you logical or emotional? See, Captain Dhoni, in stress, the whole stadium, everyone is shouting, yelling, and stress is there. He remains so cool. Have you seen every time Dhoni getting, and that's why he was the best captain of Indian cricket team, correct? India has ever seen, and he has got the best track record. So same thing is about investments. You have to remain cool, rational, logical, or are you an emotional person? And how responsive you, you are. See, what happens, we have also seen uh, people like, you know, when you small kids panic, they hide, they run away, correct? Same thing we have seen many people, they become unresponsive when this kind of, they don't want to face the reality. So are you responsive? You need to work with your advisors, you need to respond in a timely manner. Uh, so are you responsive and you prompt what action needs to be taken? And also you have to be very simple. The more you analyze, you analyze it and and you talk to so many people, so much gossip, then you, I, you know, I get every day more than 50 uh, WhatsApp messages of different news, what's happening in the world, clients send me, what's your opinion on this? So they, you know, in the world, imagine if you are Prime Minister Modi, uh, there are 130 crores people in India, they all have opinion about him, is he going to satisfy everyone? No. He is going to feel what is right and he is going to decide as a leader. Same thing, you and I, we have to decide what is the right thing to do. And we don't have to have opinion about everything. We don't have to analyze every news. And when you overanalyze, you get confused and you lose the control over your mind. And then you take wrong decisions. And that's also we have experienced this time. Uh, so the more you are cool like Captain Dhoni, the better your portfolio will perform, better your portfolio. And this I have seen with also people in our industry also. You know, I have I talk to many people, at bottom they panic, at top they go, they enter the market. Uh, this, is, this is true with everyone. I am not talking only about the investors, the best of best, correct? We are all humans. Now I will give you another example. Uh, Oh, let's understand what the situation is now, correct? Let's see. Okay, shutdown was not possible in 1980s. It was possible this time. Why? Because of technology. If the internet was not there, if streaming service was not there, if laptops were not there, we could not work from home. Oh, the economy couldn't have shut. shut. So technology is going to play a very critical role going forward. Uh, IT and telecommunication has connected the whole world. See, I'm sitting in Dallas and I'm talking to you guys in India. And, you know, we, our office has been closed for three months, but we didn't have a single disruption. Every client, every transaction was done. We never had a problem. As if we are talking to the client next door or he's sitting in front of us. 
that was possible that was not possible in 1980s the physical economy uh, has got most impacted uh, like real estate or anything which has to do physical uh, transactions that has got more impacted and is going to recover slowly uh, and uh, this has happened first time after the world war 2 this kind of disruption though your current generation have never seen pain imagine people have must have seen pain in World War Two. Can you watch one World War Two documentary? How many people died? What happened that time? Hmm? There was and how people survived and how people build wealth, careers, and families during that time. That kind of pain we this current generation has never seen that. Hmm? So this is what you have to understand that uh, now industries which recovered first, the healthcare, the pharma industry recovered the first. It went up by. 25 30 percent in last one and a half month IT and telecommunication recovered financial markets recovered uh, because they were operational they were the first uh, the other economy like you know manufacturing uh, capital goods uh, they have not yet recovered and they're in the process of recovering now they will recover now they as the economy opens up and the food industry the basic groceries correct they recovered like Nestle Avenue Supermart those recovered correct so they recovered the first and now it will spread to other parts of the economy. We will see that. Now, what is going to happen in the next 12 months? What is going to happen is the projection of the World Bank, that Asian economy which was going to grow by 8%, 7%, of six overall 6% 6 has come down to 2%. The US employment, unemployment which was going uh, very fast. Uh, they were expecting last Friday on the employment numbers to go from 17% to 20%. Instead of that, it has reversed to 13%. That's why markets went up. They lost. They thought the more people are going to lose jobs in last one week. Uh, they have been losing correct for last two months, but last one week more people gained jobs. Uh, and India's G GDP is going to grow at the slowest pace after 1947 since independence. So there is that kind of pain is there. So people are scared, correct? People, um, financial capital is scared. In the so pe everyone is not going to get a loan. Everyone is not able to pay their bills on the time. So this, this much pain is there, but still the economy is going to function and recover from this. So we need to understand that situation. Now, so in during this time, what is the most important thing? We have to think what's next, what's going to happen next. So a large number of small and mid leverage companies will go bankrupt in last one year or two years. Uh, so what happens is like, you know, when we get a heart attack, some people die on the spot, some people die over a period of six months, some people die over two months, two years. We get uh, some people survive and they are able to live for next 20 years. So same thing, this heart attack we got, the world got a heart attack and some companies are going to, so this is going to happen. Uh, cloud comp computing and digital economy is going to lead the world. IT and cash rich companies are going to even grow stronger and big companies are going to go even bigger to those who didn't have debt. And social distancing is going to be a normal part of our life. And we all are going to change our lifestyle and our asset allocations. So which we need to understand. India was extremely overweight on real estate. The real estate weight is going to come down. Financial assets is going to go up. So there is a massive shift going to happen in over the next two, three, five years. And the other thing which I've realized, every country has its own culture. So among the Asian cultures, cultures like in India, Middle East and China, if you ask any American or European, he'll tell you. And the European American, he'll cut the loss and he'll sell the property at 20% down. Indians won't do that. Hmm? Uh, they don't, they hold on for next 10 years and they incur more opportunity losses. But that's our nature, that's our culture. So you will see, so what happens when we do that, we prolong the pain and that pain. But so in this, this market, real estate market is going to recover over a longer period of time, but uh, so fresh investments are going to be less. So all that new savings which is ha happening is going to go to financial market. Uh, so the stock market, it's a good for stock market, it's good for banks, and that shift is going to see that in the over period of next. Now, over next year, one year, there will be a lot of bad news coming up, like what happens to the Olympics? If Olympic gets postponed, what happened? There's a lot of decisions to be made. Uh, there will be some governments being 
uh, thrown up, thrown out. Like I was expecting uh, riots in uh, many countries, but the first thing it happened in America. You see the riots happening in U.S. Uh, social unrest is happening because of. Uh, this coronavirus and COVID-19 and it exploded. Now this kind of thing is going to happen in many countries. Some currencies are going to blow up, but still not all economies are going to do. This is baked in. Now all the major corporations in US, financial institutions and big investors know this is going to happen. They didn't know Corona was going to happen in December or January, they were caught in a surprise, but now they know what is going to happen. So now it's no longer a risk. They're going to factor that behavior and without any emotions, they're going to put checks and balance in place that they don't get impacted. But retail investors are going to see this news more and more hammered on them and they're going to panic. This is also reality, which is going to happen. You will see more panic. Uh, as markets go up, more and more investors are going to exit the stock market. Um, they think, should I make my money safe? And that's another fallacy which is going to happen um, because they have never seen uh, those who have gone through 91, 90, 2001, 2009 crisis, they'll behave differently. So we have a lot of 800 clients and we see a different kind of behavior between different sets of clients. Uh, mature clients who have seen 2001, 2008, their behavior is very cool and calm and quiet. And in fact, they're adding the money. Those who are panicking are the first time investors. So this is going to happen. Um, so we all need to have plan A and plan B. And the other, other thing recently, I was talking to one of the uh, very big, uh, what do you call, industry experts, um, uh, mutual fund companies, and I asked him, where did you see the maximum panic? There are, f in f there are five kind of uh, sources where mutual funds get, get the money. One is on direct, the second is from banks, the third is from national distributors, and the fourth is from financial advisors, uh, advisors like us, and the fifth is foreign financial institutions. So of these five categories, who panicked the most? I asked them in so then the most panic uh, was these guys. What do you call those who invested directly because they were they couldn't know what's going happening and they couldn't control their emotions and they made a lot of mistakes. So maximum outflows of money happen in that category and the least outflow happened in the category of financial advisors and foreign financial institutions. Now they are saying that now going forward as market starts going up. You, they are going to see outflows even in the retail investors because they will say, okay, let me make my money save. I've recovered this much and keep it aside. Uh, uh, but institutions are going to invest more uh, because they have knowledge and experience. So that trend we are going to see that in the next one year. Now, the other thing which uh, I would like to share, if you want to manage your anxiety and if you manage how to navigate through this trouble time. The most important tool for you is asset allocation. How much money you put in equities and how much money you put in your bank deposits, that is going to be the key, uh, how you manage that. Hmm? So asset allocation helps you to from downside and from the ups and allows you to give you a better upside. So I'm going to share that with you, how you do that, correct? Now, everyone is a different personality. Now, based on your personality, you should define uh, what you should do. And I'm going to give you a real case study, how one person navigated through this uh, trouble times, correct? Now, so this is how you allocate the, your savings to different asset sources, correct? So I'm going to focus only on two sources today, bonds, that is banks fixed deposits and bonds fixed interest, and how much you put money in your equity. So there are different ratios, 100% in bank deposits or bonds, 0% in stock market, 90, 10, 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40, and this is 0, 10. So this is extremely aggressive, and this is extensive defensive, correct? So you go through that. Now, how this asset allocation and what returns it gives you. And so this I have taken, this model I have taken on the US model. Now, what you do is in India, you add 5% to the returns what I'm showing because in India, the inflation rate is higher by 5%. Interest rate is higher by 5%. So you add five. So the best one year and worst one year and average return 
each of these asset allocations gave you. So what returns you want? So what returns you want? And based on that, what you should do is, so here it is. So if you want 5.5% return, you put 100% money in your bonds and you uh, over a period of 10 years or 15 years, uh, some of this 10 or 15 years, one year you'll get 32% return, one year you'll get minus eight. So this is the volatility when you put 100% money in your bonds. When you put 90 and 10, this is the 6.2% average you get. This is the return you get. And you keep on going like this, correct? So here, if you want to, in case of India scenario, you add plus 2% return here. Instead of 5.5, here is 7. Here is 6.2, you add 8. 6.7, 8.7. Here 10, you put plus 2 or 3. 13 or 14 percent return you can get here correct because it could and this is the way you can get but when you put 100 percent here in one year you may get 54 and here one year you get minus 43 like what happened in the month of march um, the markets crashed by 40 percent so you can see this kind of volatility and what happened you will see this kind of 54 percent return happening uh, what happened sorry let me go back to that slide so you can see this kind of stuff happening so you need to choose what bucket you are now once you choose this bucket which bucket you want to be you need to buy stick you can't keep on shuffling you can't say once i want 80 20 then you should have 90 10 if you do that you will destroy your wealth you'll destroy your wealth you can't change uh, this is what you have to define and stick to the plan and that's where your behavior comes you can't do flip-flop so once you get married you can't change your spouse if you go oh, after getting married you see a better opportunity no, yes it's going to happen you know that life is full of choices you'll get so many different options in life but you can't do go on back and forth once you make a choice you stick with it work with it same thing happens to an asset allocation you stick with it and you manage that and that's the key and that's where the most difficult part in financial markets um, people don't stick with it so how you react in a bad year when your investments do not perform that defines your character and your destiny a bad year defines you, not a good year. You're not, so I always say, the life of a bridge depends on the weakest pillar of the bridge, not the strongest. So when you, when the markets go down and you freeze and you can't take action, then there is a problem, correct? Uh, so when you, they run, how you, how you react when it's going up, how you react when it's going down, that's the key. So this is the way. Now I'll give you a, a real life example. Uh, this I'm giving you of exa uh, which has happened means I know this person and I've worked with him. So how a person reacted in a bad market. So this is the case of a German gentleman whose portfolio as on February 15th uh, was $471,000. Now this portfolio had 30% bonds, 70% equity. Now he had this is a retirement account. He cannot make no fresh investments can be made in this retirement account because uh, this person had left the job. You can contribute to this money only if you're working. Now, this person needs $3,000 per do dollars withdrawal from this retirement account for his living expenses. The average return he got for last 10 years was 11%, which is very good return. And highest he got 35% in a good year. And worst was minus 20 between the last 2009 and 19. Now, he now how he built this portfolio? He built this portfolio from 2005 to 2016 through an SIP of average $2,000 per month. So in a 10 year period, he invested $24,000 every year and he invested about $240,000. So that two forty dollars has become four seventy, dollars and which was there as on that, um, case now how this is the screenshot of his account uh, the value of the portfolio now exactly what happened to this portfolio uh, i'll show you so these are the dates so as on february 15 the value of the portfolio was 470000 correct now you see what happened when the market crashed it came down to 281 on march 18 here it was 2 uh, 474 and it came down in a span of this 281. Hmm. So he got minus 40% return. The actual loss was 190,000. 
190,000. Now, even if his SAPs, he, now he can't make any new SAPs because this is a frozen account. Now, so what he did, his asset allocation was 70,10. He changed when the markets went down on March 18 to 90,10. He withdrew money from bonds and put more money in equity because equity was cheaper at that time. Uh, absolutely. And he had the courage to do that. Hmm? Now, how many of us can do that? Hmm? Now, this he did that, and now what happened as of today? So I'll show you his account as of today. His account of today went back to 445, it recovered. Hmm? So he recovered out of 190, he recovered $169,000, plus he got a dividend of $5,000 in the month of May. The, uh, now, where he's invested this money? He's invested 10% in bonds, yielding only 1.5% 1, 1, return. Now, if he keeps 100% in bonds, he's going to earn only 1.5%. That's not sufficient. That money will not last him. So he has to take risk and he has to manage. So 30% is in U.S. technology stock, 30% is in U.S. value stocks, and 30% is in emerging market stocks, which includes India, which includes India. Now, this is the way he has invested. Now, he has kept this 90 and he's recovered. And this portfolio will fully recover in next two months. It will fully recover next two months. And this is how you manage, correct? Now. Imagine you doing that. Hmm? So the truth about our character gets expressed through the choices we make during bad times. Good times never define us. What we do during bad times, that defines our destiny. And this is the time, 2020 is going to define a lot of characters of a lot of investors, a lot of companies, a lot of families and a lot of advisors. So this is the year you need to focus on. Now, if you're greedy or fearful, or you should have conviction on your investments, the most important thing you should have believed the world is not going to end. The world is not going to finish. It's not a doomsday scenario. We have a few people are going to get bankrupt. A few people are going to die. It's a very sorry and unfortunate situation but that's the way mother nature functions and we have to accept that and live with it and the world is going to go back to normal and this is going to happen correct so we need to design what our intent is the work on our plans and processes and all the information gossip we get from uh, all your whatsapp friends all the news channels when you talk to me, I did this, I did that, and everyone talks about what good thing he did. Nobody talks about what bad things he do. Uh, you put all that and digest it. So I'll give you another example of a diamond. What is diamond? What is diamond? Diamond is a piece of rock. It's a it's a stone. Nothing more than a stone. But why diamond is so valuable? Diamond is valuable not because it makes you look beautiful. Diamond is valuable because it is the hardest material Mother Nature has ever made. Diamond never cracks. That stone never cracks. And that diamond can crack at all other rocks, any other metal, it can break. And that's why diamonds are valuable. Now diamonds, so your character, if it cracks, you're, you're like ordinary stone. If your character doesn't crack and you remain steady during good times and bad times, then you are diamond. So then your value will go up. Now, how many stones are like that? Out of every rock is not a diamond. So out of one lakh stones or 10 lakh stones, you'll find one stone which is a diamond. Same thing is going to happen about human beings. Everyone can't be a diamond because we are all emotionals. Now, what my objective is, intent is, we'll try to work with you to make you like a diamond. Remain rock steady and rational during the bad times. And that is what will make your investments work. And this is the most important thing you need to focus in life. Uh, so what matters for an efficient, so how you do that? So what we analyze, we understand the age of a person, quality investments, how simple the person is and how diversified the investments are. So I showed you the earlier portfolio, the how the portfolio was diversified, 30% US technology stock, 30% U.S. value stocks, 30% emerging market stocks. Same way you need to, it's a diversified, correct? It's a diversified portfolio and 10% bonds. You need to diversify 
geographically, globally, not only in one place. That also determines your portfolio. Then is diversification like an asset allocation? No. Diversification and asset allocation are two different things. Uh, asset allocation is uh, each asset class, equity, finance and that uh, growth. And diversification is within the asset class, how you diversify between India and US. Uh, and that's a diversification. Diversification, if you in, buy mutual funds from five different mutual fund companies, all multi-cap, that's not diversification. Mm -hmm. uh, you buy mutual fund, large cap, mid cap and small cap, that's not diversification. Diversification is you diversify between US, India, Japan, different emerging, and that's diversification. So e th that's very important uh, to understand that. Uh, so the other unfortunate, Examples I find in India, real life example, in India 99.9% .9 people are locally invested. They don't have global asset allocation. And the, so one thing everyone forgets, they're living in a global world. See today, even in India, you wouldn't be working from home if Microsoft, Google, Apple was not there. Hmm? And streaming service was not there. Your life is also globally diversified today. So your financial assets also should be globally diversified. You need to make that change. now. Uh, this was my last slide. Now I'm going to like every presentation webinar I do on knowledge check. Uh, I talk something different than investments. Uh, so today I'm going to do a knowledge check on something else. And while I'm talking about this, feel free to post your questions on the text box and I'll answer them. I'll combine the similar questions and take into these things. Uh, now knowledge check. How much barrels of oil we consume? Uh, before the COVID-19 happened. You know that? 100 billion barrels per day we were consumed. 100 bill, million, sorry, 100 million barrels of oil. So that one million, uh, sorry, one barrel is 42 gallon. One gallon is 4.24 liters. So we were consuming, you need 10, 100,000, 10,000 lakh, 10 lakh crore, 10 crore. 1,590 crores of liters petrol per day. Now, the world, this mother world, in 1849, didn't consume a single liter of oil. In 19, 1850, the oil was discovered. So before 1849, there was no oil. So the earth was so unpolluted, so pure. See how much pollution we are passing every day. Now, this is also one of the reasons things like coronavirus is happening, our oceans are getting polluted, uh, air is getting polluted, and our life, so this is going to not last long. This is going to go down. So our life is going to change. So even in your investments, oil has reached its peak. Uh, you will see a massive change happening in the world economy because of this. And that's why this I did this presentation. Now, the, my next week, next webinar, after two weeks is going to be, life after COVID-19. So I'm going to share in more details the changes happening in the global economy and the industries. So that time I'm zooming more. Today was a high level. There it's going to go more in details, correct? And I hope you enjoyed the webinar today and I'll answer your question. Mm. Yeah, so uh, the first question is based on your uh, our current uh, trend, of recovery, shouldn't we reshuffle our existing portfolio? Uh, yes and no. Uh, shuffling should be only improving the quality and you should also add more money. As I said, when uh, the markets were down, those who added, they benefited. Uh, those who panicked, then benefit. So this is the best time to add more money to your portfolios uh, and change your asset. Al I would say this is the best time to change your asset allocation. Before you change your mutual funds investments, the first thing fundamental need to change is your change your asset allocation, rebalance your portfolio. So if you had 80-20 uh, and now it has become 80-10 because equities values have gone down and your bank deposits have gone up, you need to shift money. So the first thing you need to change is asset allocation and then you need to improve your quality of your mutual funds. And this and it's a case-to-case -case basis after evaluating your portfolio strategy. Now, and you need to have more exposure to US and 
the new industries yes mm, uh, then the next question is uh, how should one reconcile the rise of in the indian stock market given the projection of uh, contradiction of in gdp and the, the downgrading of ratings uh, very good question okay so if you look at the same question applies to us also correct so the us has uh, have extreme uh, deficit they have spent 6 months of their gdp uh, the america's gdp is 22 trillion dollars and the government has printed 11 trillion dollars of more money and flooded the market so uh, the current, so sh they also should in long term there is going to be impact of this so the same cases are happening in india um, now in india what is going to happen the, the valuations have come down drastically now some companies who are cash rich companies who don't have debts they are going to capture and gain market share they are going to get and the other thing what has happened in this corrections uh, this kind of corrections comes once in 10 years and when this kind of correction comes the promoters of good companies they buy more shares and increase their shareholding that's also happening in india uh, then there is also the i call them strategic investors so if you see in us and india uh, if markets have gone up somebody bought the shares correct who bought the shares retail investors then buy more shares they panicked so some strong people bought it uh, who were the strong people they were all strategic investors and long-term investors they wait for this kind of bloodbath and they bought that so mostly this consists of insiders promoters uh, and very good strategic investors uh, have happened so i don't see markets going down uh, but that doesn't apply to every stock. Uh, good companies and good overall, I would say Indian market rally has just begun. It's going to go slightly uh, fast in the next coming one, one or two months. Then it will stabilize. It will correct a little bit. So it's like this. It will correct. It will go up by 7-8%, correct by 2%. That's not correction, correct? So... Uh, that kind of stuff is going to happen. It's not going to fall by like 30-40% what happened in the month of February. That's not going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the next question I got uh, for the slight or bad news for next 18 months, what should be our plan A and plan B? I guess plan A is stick to the current way we are seeing invested uh, and simplicity advice. And what should be the plan B? Very good question. Okay. So your plan A, uh, plan A is... Uh, you should be optimistic from the current level uh, as the, because all weak players, all weak players are going to get out of the market. So uh, those who know me uh, and have been interacting with me for the last two months, you, I, in the beginning I said increase your allocation to U.S. equity which and then increase your allocation to pharma. Uh, pharma for the last five years I've been telling and it paid off in the last one month. It paid off handsomely last one month. U.S. equity also paid off very handsomely last one month. Then for the last two weeks, I've been telling everyone, now banking is the sector where you need to look and increase your allocation. And that I still hold that. Banking is still the area where you need to do that. And, and then it will spread to other sectors. Uh, it will spread to other sectors and this kind of continue. Now plan B is you keep some... Okay, everyone needs to keep six months to one year's household expense in a bank deposit. You should never invest that money in stock market uh, uh, or with us. You need to keep six months to one year expenses as a bank deposit. You should not have more than two years of your monthly expenses in bank deposit. You are destroying your wealth. Hmm? Hmm? And uh, you should not have more than two months. The rest money should be invested in asset allocation uh, based on your risk profile between bonds and stocks it should be invested and if the markets correct by 10 or 15 percent next time i don't see it correcting you should increase your allocation again at that time to equity and you should keep some cash that's the plan b you should have um, and the other thing don't spread your investments i have seen it India, see the difference between I see in India and America, the Americans uh, are much more mature when it comes to investments. Indians are experiencing last 20 years, Indian financial markets have become popular only in last 20 years and American stock markets have been there for last 
70, 80 years. And years 70% of US population invest in stock market. And in India, 5% of population. So Indian markets are still emerging. Now, what I see a difference between the behavior between India and US is, is they panic at the bottom. Retail investors panic a lot and they chase the investments when it goes up. So that behavior should not happen. Uh, uh, next question is, does asset allocation have a connection with the age of the investor? Yes, it has. Um, it has asset allocation does have uh, with. Uh, so a 30 year old person should have 95% exposure in equity uh, because he's uh, long time horizon is there and he has got a lot of and whereas a 60 year old person should not more have, have than 60% in equity or 50% in equity. So age has to be there. Uh, you should not change your asset allocation for timing the market. That is dangerous. You should not do that. Asset allocation has nothing to do with the market. Hmm? Uh, how much volatility and bad news do you... Uh, next question I have. How much volatility and the news yet... Uh, should I invest for my retirement or should I wait for turmoil to go away? Okay, the turmoil is never going to go away. There is always going to be some bad news somewhere. So at this very moment, at this very moment, somewhere, somewhere in the world, somebody is dying and somebody is getting born. So same thing is going to happen. There is always going to be good news and bad news, a string of things. Now, what has happened is this COVID-19 kind of a major bad news is not going to be there, at least for the near foreseeable future. Uh, this kind of earth shaking event is not going to be happening that. Uh, now, if again, there is a spike in this, okay, that everyone knows, like 9-11 happened first time in September of 2001. It was first time the world witnessed a, such a major terrorist attack. But after that, so many terrorist attacks happened. World got used to it. The markets didn't correct. So everyone, so the same thing is going to happen with COVID-19. Now, when the second wave comes, the market is not going to correct so sharply. Trust me, it's not going to correct, but everyone will panic and try to run away. It's not because smart investors, institutional investors have already put checks and balances in their investments. So you should start building your retirement portfolio, no matter what time it is. And you should work out a plan, uh, work out a plan and always try to work with some advisor because you are your biggest enemy. I'm not to, trying to promote my service or my company. I'm trying to tell you the biggest enemy of any human being is himself because emotionally he watches TV and can take drastic wrong decisions. Okay, the next question is uh, the current market index numbers uh, has already factored domino effect that is going to happen in next 18 months. Mm, uh, partially yes and partially no. Uh, the rotation has just begun. Uh, I would say, uh, let me give you an example. Have you noticed last one week there was a news in the article India's foreign exchange reserve has come to close to $500 billion. It, it, has, it was normally $460 billion. So even in this market, a lot of FDI money is coming, a lot of foreign investments is coming. We got $40 billion in last one month's time. So, uh, there is a lot of money flow because of the geopolitical situation, China issues. Uh, India has become uh, a favorite destination of favorite darling of the world, Western world. They, so everybody wants to have friendship with India. So there is a lot of investments, long term investments going to come to in India. FDI investments is going to come. And when that FDI investment comes, it creates a long term impact, long term impact. Um, and the Indian economy and we you will see that happening uh, over a period of so there are a lot of other news has not uh, it will happen step by step uh, okay next question is uh, as a part of asset allocation is it wise to diversify other instruments like gold uh, or real estate since this move related to the stock markets uh, okay gold just now okay gold you should invest small amount every month uh, not more than five percent of your portfolio should be in gold but now gold is overhyped 
eighteen hundred dollars, seventeen hundred dollars. Everyone is fearing. The gold investment was good when it was twelve hundred dollars an ounce, or when it was thirty thousand rupees. Uh, you should invest a small portion every month, not uh, uh, jump into anything overnight. Um, uh, and next question is about gold. I've answered that. Gold should be gradual, not big. Uh, okay. Then next question is: Is it advisable to move from large cap to U.S. stocks? Uh, a good question. Um, yes, everybody should have uh, U.S. stocks. Uh, but if you're living in India, uh, now okay. So when I work on the portfolios, correct? I work on the portfolios. I work. I look also at the family background. So a family which is hundred percent living in India, the kids are also in India. I don't give more than twenty percent to U.S. Twenty uh, percent of that portfolio should be in U.S. Now a family whose kids are in U.S. I'll give them 30%, 35%, because eventually the inheritance is going to go abroad. So it depends on case-to-case -case basis. Uh, again, asset allocation uh, and diversification depends on, we should not look at the returns. It should You should look at what exactly is going to happen with this family and how they are going to behave. So if your kids are going to be, there are many Indians who are settled in India, but their kids are U.S. citizens. Their asset allocation should be high in U.S. equities. Yes, um, that's the way to structure the portfolio. Uh, so, and the best investment asset class in equity is, of course, U.S. Best companies in the world today in the stock market are in U.S. And based on that, I'll do that. Uh, I, with that, I'll end my today's uh, session. I really appreciate and thank you everyone for attending the event today. And I look forward to see you after two weeks. Uh, and in the meantime, feel free, if I have not answered any questions, feel free to contact my team or we'll approach you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful weekend. Nice weekend and stay safe. Bye.